Hey everybody. What I've got in front of me today is the lineup of AccuTac bipods. This isn't all of them. Uh, I've got a whole list of them up here, but they make even more than that. And they also make accessories and things like that. Um, including in front of me is the brand new HD50. Uh, HD50 was designed specifically around the 50 caliber sniper rifle. And so that thing is beefcake. <laughs> It is freaking strong and big and burly. Uh, so I want to go through all these. I want to show you a comparison. This one versus that one. Why the difference in price? Why, you know, what's the difference in height and length and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to get to unboxing these, throw them on a couple of rifles so I can show you how everything works. And then we'll go through. Oh, and also in front of me I've got the spikes that they make and also the rings which have a level built right in. I really like that. When you get your AccuTac, it's going to be packaged in a box and that's actually going to be packaged inside another box. When you open the box up, you're going to find your warranty card, uh, limited lifetime warranty, and a sticker. And then in the box, you're going to find well packaged the bipod that you purchased. Uh, in my opinion, these are a little bit overpacked. I don't think they need this much <laughs> protection on a bipod that is made to withstand abuse. Uh, but here's your bipod, ready to rock. You don't have to do anything to it. Uh, you might want to check, make sure your feet are, are snugged up. And that's really about it. So guys, if you're looking at these bipods, you're probably looking to upgrade from something like uh, one of these Harris style bipods um, and one thing you're going to have to consider doing is mounting some type of Picatinny rail onto your gun so that these will fit. All of these come with um, two mounting points so keep that into consideration too if you have limited space on your rail. This is the new HD50. Uh, this is the, which one is this one here? FC5, this is the FC10 mounted on my air gun, and this is the BR4. Yep, this is the BR4. These are all quick detach, and the prices that I put up behind me are all for the quick detach models. Uh, in my opinion, it's worth it to buy the quick detach right out of the gate if you're not going to permanently mount this on your rifle. The HD50 does not have a quick, um, quick detach lever. It is a uh, thumb screw style, and then if you really want to crank down on it, you can get a wrench and put a little bit of wrench torque to it. Guys, here's the brand new HD50, uh, coming in with a retail MSRP of $430. Um, I was just talking to Philippe about this one, and this thing, he really put some effort into making this thing truly beefcake. I mean, just really, really sturdy and strong. Uh, on the inside here, the leg adjustments, uh, he beefed these up a little bit, put a slightly different angle on them. So, and oh, the spring, a little bit tougher spring in there. And that's all how you adjust these, by the way. You just pull and snaps right into place. Both legs, real easy. You've got forward and back positions. And the feet on the HD50 do come off, and you can put in spikes. I'll show you that. There's the spikes. And they just thread right in and tighten up. And now you can spike into whatever you need to spike into. One feature of the HD50 is this uh, thumb lever on the back. With a quick loosen, you've got nice and easy adjustment, or uh, cant adjustment, left and right. And that is really, it's really quite nice. And if you don't like your handle here, all you have to do is give a little tug and you can position it into a couple different spots and make it wet. whatever's easy for you. You can see the internal workings here on that thumb lever. Real easy to do. Once you lock it in place, it's there. It's done. It's There's no play in that. You're tightening up a screw on it. There's no play at all. Before I tear up my bench, I'm going to take this spike off. What this does not have is a swivel feature. Uh, some of the other ones have the swivel feature. It'll be this here big 
uh, big conglomeration of stuff right there. And we'll go over that here in a minute. Um, I am gonna test this thing out on a 50 cal here uh, in a few weeks, and I'll post up a video about that. I have no doubt that this thing is going to hold up to it no problem at all. One thing that did disappoint me with the uh, HD50 was that there's no 45 on some of the other models. In fact, I think this is might be the only model that doesn't have a 45 degree position. And I understand why it's it's you know the way they the way they made this. There's really not a whole lot of room in there to have that 45 degree position. Um, so that's unfortunate because I like this one a lot. One of the things I like about this HD50 and this style is how it kicks the pivot point on the legs. It kicks it out from the rifle. So if you follow this triangle up, it basically ends just above the barrel, probably right about where that rail is if there were, you drew that imaginary line. That is going to add to stability. Um, if you had something that was real narrow like this, it would be pretty easy to, you know, tilt back and forth with a little bit of effort. But since these are so wide, it really, um, it really cuts that down and really gives you a very stable platform to shoot from. Now I got a ruler here just in front of me, and I've got 13 and a half inches from edge of rubber to edge of rubber. Just like that, you can extend the leg. And with the leg extended, we're at 17 and a half from edge to edge. If you want the legs to come in, it's as simple as pushing a button. If you only want to go up one click, that's pretty easy too. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just, I'm pulling down with the front fingers and pushing up with the thumb. Just give this a squeeze and a push and it'll come up one at a time. Real easy, one-handed operation. Uh, you can even, you know, go over to the other side. Maybe not so easy to do one-handed, but um, definitely doable. I dig it, guys. I really think this thing is beefcake and a really well-made, well-thought-out model. That's basically all I have to say about the HD50. Uh, if you need a bipod that you are for sure going to abuse, consider the HD50. Uh, whether you're just going to, going to abuse it through day-to-day -day life or you have a gun that's going to just kick butt, consider this guy. Uh, next to it, I have the FC10 QD. And I want to show you some of the differences and some of the upgrades, especially this uh, one in the leg. Um, between these two models. This is an older model, this is the newer upgrade. So if we take a peek inside here, how these legs adjust, here's the notch that the leg fits in. You pull, sorry, you pull, and it finds its next notch. And same thing, okay, we got that down. Look how big this opening is right here. It is pretty freaking huge. When you compare it to the older model, the older model is a much more elegant uh, slope to it, but look at how much smaller that opening is. So that is one of the things that's giving this so much strength and so much rigidity is having such a huge opening and having this redesigned a little bit, this, uh, this point that slides in there. So the legs between the HD50 and the FC10 are basically the same overall, except HD50 is a little bit shorter. With the extensions all the way out, again, the HD50 is a little bit shorter. However, it gives you a few more points of adjustment. You got, well, one extra click of adjustment. And then overall length, you're going to be one inch shorter with the HD50. I did a video on this a while back where uh, I compared it to the Atlas 5H and uh, one of the things I complained about was it was tedious for me to put this on the rifle and I missed something. And what I missed was all I have to do is turn it and this opens up all, as much as it needs to in order to be easily mounted onto the rifle with 
no problem whatsoever. Then you straighten out your legs again, tighten it down with the, uh, the lever, thumb lever, and you're off to the races. Now for me being a bench rest shooter, air gun bench rest shooter, this is how I like to use these bipods in a 45 degree angle and nice wide stance. Again, uh, that, that imaginary triangle coming up. You know, if you drew it, it's going to be all the way, let's see, somewhere above, somewhere in this area. So if you want to take a look at that triangle from your point of view, you come up like this and you're above the barrel of this rifle. And that's stable. I mean, that is a big wide platform for this thing to stabilize your gun on. I have no doubt that this would stand up to the 50 cal rifle, but one of the other differences you'll see is the thickness in this area here. This thing is freaking thick. This HD 50 is three quarters of an inch thick of what is it, T6 aluminum alloy, whereas on this FC 10, it looks like a half inch. Yep, half of an inch thickness. Plenty thick to do a hell of a good job stabilizing, holding up to that beating that you're going to give it. All the other features are basically the same as the HD50 except for swivel. Swivel's accomplished with this thumb lever right here, which just like the HD50, if you don't like it sitting there, you can turn it and it'll find another home and that'll that'll be where it rests. Neat little you know that's a clever little added feature to this thing is being able to just put this where you want it loosen it up and it swivels really nice glass smooth no not glass smooth but really not far off either uh, super smooth there's no wobbling this way or anything that's really gonna make you scratch your head and say gee I wonder if this was worth it this thing's worth it so you've got the FC 10 and you've got the FC5. FC10 is $450, FC5 $430. So for that $20 difference, I wanted to know what is the difference? What's that $20 all about? Why is there another model? You can see pretty clearly the legs are thinner on the FC5. So I would say if weight is a concern, you've got 32.8 ounces versus 26.5 ounces on the FC5. Let's look at height adjustment on the legs. FC5, one, two, three, four. FC10, eight. So you can tell right there, that's a big difference. Is it worth 20 bucks? It's up to you to decide that. So that's the basic differences for $20 between these two models. They do make m large models like this with the cant adjustment like this BR4 model difference is going to be that like this BR4 model your legs are no longer going to be so far out like these guys are they're going to come in and it's basically going to be this same center area with the larger longer legs uh, those models are the LR10 and the SR5 and uh, SR5 is coming in at 276 I forget what the LR10 is uh, moving on to the BR4 I'll bring you guys close and we'll take a look at this one so here's your BR4 model. For most shooters, this is going to be about the size that you're looking for. Nice, easy to carry through the woods, uh, and a nice stable platform for you. No leg extensions. Uh, comes in at 14.6 ounces, ounces, so pretty lightweight. Um, this would be the one that's going to be a close, close comparison to the to the old Harris style of bipods. Quick release the uh, lever on this, or you can get it permanently mounted. And then to make your cant adjustment, your swivel, it's this thumb screw right here. Allows you to swivel back and forth. There's your pivot point. So the way this works is on top of this thumb screw is basically it's putting pressure on this inside sleeve in here. Just putting pressure, upward pressure on there, allowing you to lock it in place. The legs work the same way. A pull. And you've got all your positions as usual. Now flipping this over and comparing it to, let's do this one. This area in here 
looks the same to me. And honestly, I bet if I, I bet some of these legs, if I really wanted to, I bet they're exchangeable, interchangeable. Like, you know, I mean, you can see it's just standard hardware. Um, I bet I could actually change these out and have longer legs on this one here. I'm gonna try that. So there you go, guys. I was able to swap these legs out pretty easily using simple hand tools. Um, so maybe if you want the best of both worlds where you have tilt and swivel, not and at the same time, but you have both options, you can get, like I did here, the BR4 and the FC5, and you got the best of both worlds. You've got the longer legs and the shorter legs. You've got tilt, you've got swivel, and all you have to do is swap the legs however you want them. And it only took me five minutes, and I've never done it before. Um, so I'll actually uh, take it apart so I can, you know, put it back where it goes, and I'll do it so you guys can see. You do want to be careful, there are small parts involved, and I'm not going to even talk about warranty, because who knows. thing I wanted to show you from AccuTac is the 30 millimeter or 34 millimeter scope mounts. And these guys are neat because they have a level built right in to the mount. This is what you'll see on one side and this is what you'll see on the other. It's just a little peephole. So depending on what you want to look at, you can set this up on your rifle to see one or the other. You'll notice I mounted them um, with the Hex, uh, hex nut on one side here and the other side there. And the reason I did that was to show you guys, it's, it's a way to test to see if your scope mounts are of high quality. From what I've seen by AccuTac so far, I have zero doubt that these are high quality. I wish I had a 30 millimeter tube to stick in there. Um, I don't have a scope nearby, but you should be able to see pretty well that those two, everything is lined up. There's no tilting this way or that way, these suckers are made to exacting tolerances. So for $160 on scope rings that read level, what good is it if they're not actually level? So I've got a level that I trust, put it on here, I'll bring you guys up and we'll do a test. All right guys, I got my level on here that I trust. It's reading perfectly level. Let's see what this thing says. That one's reading level. Bring you guys around to the other one. And that one's reading level as well. Well guys, I hope you found this review helpful on most of the AccuTac lineup and some of the accessories. Uh, Head on over to AccuTac.com if you need any more information on any of this, and uh, you can order right from the website as well. Uh, I will not put a link down in the description due to the YouTube guidelines. I do not want to cross any borders with that. And on that note, uh, I showed you kind of how to swap feet around. Uh, I'm going to tell you not to do that so that I see why A. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> That's really all I'm going to say about all this stuff. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll see you next time. So you've got the FC-10 and you've got the FC-5. FC-10, $450. FC-5, $430. So what is that $20 difference where is it? Dude, I can't have you yelling at me the whole time. No. Okay.